Jesus Church. Thank you for joining us for another amazing service. What is up, Jesus Church friends and family, man? I hope everybody's having a great Sunday and that you are good. Uh, welcome yet again to another Sunday service. Uh, it's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. I got a few people in the studio, uh, you know, for church today. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys are good. How are you guys doing? Like, let the people hear you. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Amen, 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 yes. The guys are good, guys. Um, yeah, guys, it's going to be a quite an incredible service. Um, as you know, we are on the sermon series called Here in His Presence. Uh, God has been doing amazing things. Last week, we had a discussion with a good friend of mine, Kumo, um, and it was just fire, guys. If you missed that, please do me a favor. Do go back online and check out that service. It was incredible. Uh, going deeper into some really amazing stuff. Kumo really broke down prayer and uh, going against all odds in the best way possible that I could ever imagine. So it was an honor for me to interview him and speak to him about it. And yeah, guys, so today we have another fire service. But before we get to that, if you're not following us, please do me a favor. Please do go follow us. We are everywhere, guys, at We Are Jesus Church. That's at We Are Jesus Church on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, everywhere. <laughs> if you want to follow us, please do go there and check it out. We do have some nice snippets and nuggets from the past sermon series where um, hopefully they can help you and God can bless you through that because I have definitely been blessed. But yeah, guys, we are heading towards the end of the year and uh, sure, it has been an amazing year. God has been speaking so much and we have been on a sermon series, well, not a sermon series, but a theme the whole year called Focus. Focusing on love, faith, uh, prayer, all that good stuff. It is available for you to check it out on YouTube. We're no longer on Facebook, by the way, but you can still interact with us on Facebook. But all our sermons are on Facebook and YouTube. You can go check, just check those out. Um, look, the contact details are on screen. Contact details <laughs> are on screen right now. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, if you want us to pray for you, if you have any praise reports, how's the European? So yeah, guys, we're gonna go straight into the word right now. Please do interact with us. Throw an emoji. Tell us how you're doing. Uh, say amen. Say preaching, man of God. Say you're preaching good. Say you're on fire. If you, you are tempted to repeat it, say miss call. There's this thing that Melissa used to say <laughs> when he's preaching. And people in the congregation didn't get what he was saying. He said, Miss Call, let me say it again. So please do interact with us. Maybe he will feel you in the spirit and repeat it. But yeah, I want to introduce a very good friend of mine. Uh, Raps Siping Suping. There's a Siping in the church and there's a Suping. So please don't blame me if I get confused, okay? So Raps is going to preach to us today. He's got a burning word inside of him. And yeah, it's gonna be amazing, guys. So please do prepare the atmosphere, prepare the environments, shift every distraction aside. Call your friends, call your mom, call your dad, sister, brother, nephew, niece, puppy, cat, whoever it is, call it into the room and just have a good time in the presence of God as God is about to speak to us. Please do enjoy this. I will see you at the end of this for a word of offering. So don't rush off, enjoy the word. We'll see you later. Peace out. Hello friends, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are, have had a great, great, great week. Um, and greetings to the guys who are here with us in the studio. Um, it's so amazing that we have gathered here once more um, and that we are able to come at His presence, in the presence of God, and we are able to meet in one accord. The Bible says, do not forsake the gatherings of the saints. Um, and I believe that when we gather like this, there's so much uh, great things that we learn and get to interact about with one another, right? Um, and yeah, man, thank you very much to my great friend to Peace for an amazing introduction. Um, and yeah, man, it's been nothing but amazing. And thank you, man. Thank you for introducing me. Thank you to your wife as well for yeah for the great support kumo and your wife your matemba i appreciate you guys you guys are doing a great great a uh, great of help and great of support um yeah and melissi and his wife um snetemba really eh? she's an admitted attorney and yeah man yeah so big ups to you big ups to you and yeah and we are here yeah, ladies and gentlemen friends and i'm so great i'm so glad that we're able to gather here at the presence in the presence of God. We end this summer series for the month of November. 
in his presence um, and it's so amazing that we get to talk about the presence but how well do we understand the presence of God um, how well do we dig deeper into the presence of God and talking more about the presence of God does it mean you you just stay in the prayer room and you pray and you can feel the unction and the sense of his presence um, at that particular moment or do are we always in the presence of God um, someone who once said to me that we cannot always say that we, we pray in our secret place we ought to be praying on a daily basis everywhere and every everywhere we are we need our spirit needs needs to be praying right and that for me it's what it's saying is you i need to find you in the presence of god i need to always find you in the presence of god and that's what i've and i had to dig deeper into the presence so today i'm talking about the importance of his presence god's presence in the presence of jesus so friends before i go right into it um let's just take a moment of prayer father we thank you we give all the glory thank you for this time abba daddy in the name of jesus we honor you abba daddy we give all the honor the adoration as i'm about, about to preach your word father god that you've given me in this time and season i pray that let me decrease and you increase oh lord in the name of jesus i pray that father god be with us lord jesus that father god let the word that you give to us this day let it penetrate to our hearts lord in jesus name i've prayed amen and amen so friends see when we talk about the presence of god we're talking about god being with us we talk about god dwelling in us remember i said earlier that i need to always find you in the presence of god and when we look into the real definition of the garden of eden it's it signifies or it shows the presence of god right and we always as i said we always we always have to be in the presence of god i think not i think but i know that when we are in the presence of god there's so many things that are happening if you're going through something you're able to go back to god and pray on friday during our prayer session i i i quoted a scripture it's in the book of matthew uh, when jesus was teaching the disciples on how to pray and disciples said to jesus please teach us how to pray and i said you see if jesus would would not be able to teach, to teach the disciples how to pray if he was not in the presence of god so he's teaching them what to say to his father see if 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 a, my child comes to me and says oh he's with his friends and they want to ask something like money or anything they will send him say ask your dad right because they know that there's a certain position of my son that my son has in my life so in that way he's saying to them you are they're saying that you know him better than we do so we want you to go and ask him for money so that's what jesus was saying that let me teach you what to say when you go to my father in heaven and then this way he said our father in what in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done so that all of that it's found because jesus was always in the presence of his father you see he said he says i do what my father tells me what to do because it's it's him saying i'm always in his presence and i'm always found in his presence his presence dwells in me he is with me all right and I'm going to I want us to go to the scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. And the Bible says, "Behold, the virgin shall be with the child and bear a son." 
So here they were talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Behold, the virgin shall be with the child and bear a son, and they shall call him his name Emmanuel, which is translated to God is with us. So you see, friends, if God is with you, then every other thing else doesn't matter. What you're going through, yes, it will be of pain, and what you are at now, it will be of pain, but it's better if God is with you. You see, Jesus was given the name Emmanuel to show, uh, to, to tell us that God is with us. That means that, you see, he said in the Bible, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. The Father is in me and I'm in him. You see, that shows that and signifies the oneness. That's why he said, I'm able to do what my father, what I see my father doing. You see, you cannot do what your father is doing if you're not in his presence, if he's not inside of you. So that you need to be always found, be found in the presence of God at all times. We cannot say that. You see, someone said, I remember I had a talk with someone just, just, just a break. I remember I had a talk with someone and said, but I never got to understand why they're praying when he's driving. Why is he praying when he's walking? Why is he praying when, I mean, like he's stressed, you know, but I got to understand at a later stage is because he's found in the presence of God. There's something that's bothering him and he can't handle it at that time. And now he's saying, Father, this is what's happening. I don't know how to handle it. And he's asking, when he drives, he's asking for protection from God. You see, it's not too formal that you go into your secret place and you pray, which we're not saying it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. But at times you need to be found in the presence where God is able to drop something in your spirit at that time and at that moment. What to say, when to say it and how to say it. You see, timing is, friends, is, it's very important. It's very important. It's like when a mother tells a child to take out the chicken from the freezer in the morning before she leaves for work. She's giving you an instruction. So if you don't do it at that time and you only do it an hour before she comes back from work, it won't be, the chicken won't be, or the meat won't be defrosted as it should have been when it, if you've taken it out in the morning. Makes sense. So being in the presence of God has to do with timing as well. If God tells you what to say now, if God tells me, say one, two, and three, or pray for so-and-so, if I don't pray for that person so at that time, it like I miss it. Then I would have, if I if if I had prayed for the person that time when God told me to pray for the person, whatever that happened, it wouldn't have happened at that time. Because I did not take, I did not delay in praying for someone. If God tells you, take your right turn here and you decide not to listen to that, then God is saying to you, I was protecting you from this. And now this happened, but because you were not obedient enough to hear my word, this happens. So when we talk about the presence of God, friends, we're talking about God is with us and God is dwelling within us. That's why I'm saying that we always need to be found in the presence of God. And that's why the Bible of Matthew says, Behold, the virgin shall be with the child and bear a son, and they shall call him his name, Emmanuel, which, is, which translates to God is with us. So when Jesus came on earth, it shows that God was with us. He came in human form. It shows that God is with us. Right. So I want us to, to read and continue reading. And I say and, and Matthew chapter 33, verse 13. The Bible says, 
No, actually, this this is. Um, I think sorry to be Genesis. Sorry. So Moses said to the Lord, "You have been telling me lead this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send me with." <laughs> the Bible says, "You have said, I know you by name." And you have found favor with me. In verse 13, the Bible says, If you are pleased, this is Moses, Moses say, if you are pleased enough with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. The Bible says, and then Moses said, Remember that this nation is your people. So you see, Moses is reminding God that it's not about me here the people that you asked me to lead the israelites the egyptians that you asked me to the is, is, sorry israelites that you asked me to lead they are not my people they are your people i'm just a vessel that you sent to come and lead these people and this is why he's reminding him that remember this nation is not is is your people they're not mine and the bible continues said the lord replied to Moses and he says my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest you see when 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 you're in the presence of God you find rest it's it's high it's hard enough for you to go through a moment of depression anxiety and all of that and I'm not saying that everything else will go smoothly if you if you are still there will be challenges if you even if you're still in the presence of god i'm not saying there won't be the, the road won't be easy it will be challenging it will be difficult you'll feel weary you'll feel tired you'll feel fatigued but god is able to re-energize and give you his strength and his ability to continue the journey and the bible says in 14 that the lord replied my presence will go with you and i'll give you rest i guess moses at the time was feeling weary of leading the people because he's leading a multitude of people and it gets tiring and you can't do it alone you can't do it all by yourself the bible says in verse 15 then moses said to him if your presence does not go with us do not send us up from here. <sighs> Moses is saying, and he's challenging God, he came to the presence of God. He says, if your presence does not go with me, we cannot go any further. And this was when he was leading the people, the, 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 the Israelites out of Egypt. And he says, this I cannot do alone. This I cannot do without your presence. Not to say that Moses was not, was not in the presence of God. God wouldn't have spoken to Moses if he was not in his presence. God spoke to Moses because Moses was in the presence of God. Remember when he, Moses was in the burning, by the burning bush. It signifies the presence of God. You see, if you're in the presence of someone, I'm able to talk to you. I can't talk to you, Zane, if you're not in my presence, if we are not in each other's presence. I, yeah, we can talk over the phone and all of that, but it won't be the same as when we are, if we're in the presence of each other. And there's no closeness in the presence of each other, in the presence of God. So Moses challenges Jesus, I mean God, and says, if you do not, if, does, if your presence does not go with us, we cannot go any further from here. And I guess Aaron challenge challenges that we're coming and we're getting towards the end of the year. And it's the last rep. We're getting towards the last rep of the year. And I want to challenge us this, this day today that let's not go into the following year without the presence of God. Let's not start the year, the new year, without the presence of God.
So it's so amazing and so great to have goals, ambitions, objectives, and all of those things, and vision and all of that. But let's not do it out of the presence of God. Let's challenge him and say, God, I'm going into the year 2023. If I, your presence with, is not with me, I cannot go. I want to go with you. I want to start the year with you. And friends, it's so amazing to be in the presence of God. And I want to say this. You won't know the presence of someone if you don't have a relationship with the person. You can't tell and you can't have the relationship with the person if you if you don't you can't have the presence you can't be their presence or you won't know their presence if you don't have a relationship with them you see it's like a, a father and a child a father and a parent or parents they find safe safety in the presence of their parent or parents so i can tell you this friends that when you're in the presence of God, there is safe, there's safety, there's security, there's harmony, there's peace, there's rest. Moses knew that if the if the presence of God does not go with them, we won't find rest. We cannot find rest without without being in the presence of God. Rest. Secure safety happens when we're in the presence of God. And you will know, won't know the presence of God if we don't have a relationship with Him. And in my closing, I want to encourage all of us here, including myself, and challenge ourselves those who are watching us and the guys in the, in the room that let's go back to the presence of God let's go back to his feet whatever that you're dealing with let's take it back to the feet of Jesus during our prayer on, on Friday I said and I quoted the scripture Psalm 37 verse 5 when you look at the word commit in Hebrew, it means rolling over. And you can't commit and you can't roll over what's bothering you, what's heavy in your heart without being having a relationship with God. Let not religion overcome the relationship that you should have with God. And let us always be known to being in the presence of God. Maybe you're asking yourself, how, how do I know that I'm in the presence of God? How do I start being in the presence of God? <laughs> Number one is to believe in Jesus. Number two is to believe that there is a God. Number three is not always coming to God and asking for something is roll over, commit anxiety. See, don't take God as an image, a magician. He's not a magician. <laughs> God is a sh like Jesus is a he's a he's a he's a shepherd. We can't always go to God and go to Jesus and just take and take and take. But let's go to God and say, why A, B, C, and D is stressing me out. I don't know how to handle this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on in my life. I need a sense of direction. You see, that happens for you to be able to know and identify the presence of God. It only happens if you have a relationship with Him. And you can't know His presence without having a relationship with God. 
it's an impossible thing. A, ma a, a father and a, or a, ma a parent cannot have, a child will know, can know the presence of his father and mother if he doesn't have a relationship with them. And friends, I want to encourage us today that let's continue having the relationship with God. If God is able to drop something in your spirit, in your heart, and he says, say it, do it, let's not disobey. Someone asked me, what's the most scariest thing? What are you afraid of? I was like, disobeying the word of God being disobedient to the word of God. That's the most scariest thing. Hallelujah. So friends, let us always be known to be in the presence of God. And I want to leave you with the scripture before. Someone, someone very close to me sent me a scripture about a week ago. And when we were praying and praying for for service now and i just felt to to share it, that we are approaching the year end and we're feeling fatigued weary and we just cannot wait for the year to end and during the week the person said to me that you know we need to always get it out especially us christians and believers we need to get this thing out of our minds and getting too used to saying, oh, the year is ending. Oh, I'm tired. We need to always be doing something about it. <laughs> we cannot be finding ourselves too comfortable with what the world is saying about what's happening around us. We need to, we ought to be of different. We need to be different and see things different and live different from the world. Because we are not of the world. Hallelujah. And the person said to me that, and this time, this a month and a couple of days, right? Two months and a couple of days left. It's a good thing that we need to use the, the year, the remaining year, to what do we want to see the following year? What are you? What have you done this year that you couldn't do this year that you still want to do in the following year? And maybe some of you are trusting God for a job. Maybe some of you are trusting God for a big business breakthrough, marriage, a child. And you've been praying so hard. And I know, and I know a, lot of, a lot of us are going through something somewhere. And we don't know how to handle it. We don't know what to do, where to go. And we've been praying and praying, fasting and praying, sowing seeds and believing God. But it's still the same thing. And this is what God is saying. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 16, the Bible says, And now then, stand still and see this great thing that the Lord is about to do before your eyes. I want to encourage us, I want to encourage myself, those who are watching us. <sighs> let's, let's stand still. And let's see what God, this great thing that the Lord is about to do right before our eyes. And the scripture friends came to me at a, at a point where we were losing hope. Listen, every leader gets to a point where they lose hope. feel weary, strengthless, fatigued. But this is what God is saying in this time and season that and see this great thing that the Lord is about to do. Now God is about to do something great in our lives. He's about to do something great in your life. And let's not take advantage of it. Let's not miss it. Let's not miss what God is doing in this season. And all of these things will only happen if we are found in His presence. Remember, we won't know the presence of God 
if we don't have a relationship with him. Maybe you are there, you're watching us, you want us to pray with you. Please do let us know, just comment there. You wanna make me feel like your presence could be better. Your presence with God could be better. I mean, your relationship with God could be better. I wanna pray with you, we wanna pray with you this, this day that and a relationship is something that you work on on a daily basis. You don't just pray about it today and tomorrow. You work on it. You work on it. You work on it. You work on it. It has to be better. It has to be better. Yes, it doesn't have to be perfect, but let it be better. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now. Thank you for this time that we had in your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Mighty God, there's someone out there who wants to better your, their relationship with you, Lord. We're praying with them, Father God, this day. Then be with them, Lord Jehovah. And we're praying, Father God, Jehovah, that leaders and guiders and show us how to and how we can better a relationship with you, Father God. Mighty God, Jehovah, we're praying that, Father God, we we'll always want to be in your presence, Lord. We want to always be found in your presence. We want you to dwell in us. We want, to be, we want you to be with us. Abba Daddy, we pray this in your precious name. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen and amen. Well, friends, thank you very much for watching. When we believe and we know that we are blessed by the word. And my prayer to you this day, this week, that may your relationship with God be better every single day. And we love you. We we'll always love you. Please do let us know how we can pray with you. We would love to pray with you. We love you. My name is Rabs and I'm your friend. Cheers. Wow, guys, what an amazing word that was just given to us by Mr. Raps. Um, sure, um, I, I don't even know where to start, but he just preached such a fun message. Um, but yeah, guys, it's been incredible. It's been amazing. To the guys that's in studio, thank you so much for joining us. It was very amazing. Um, listen, we always invite you to come to the physical service. Why we do this? Because there's a whole new different dynamic when you're in the physical service. We just finished having a very amazing and incredible discussion. We get to learn from each other and share with each other from what we learn. But yeah, uh, I'm just gonna go straight into the word of offering right now. And my word of offering is gonna find it, be found in Genesis 22 uh, verse nine. But before I do that, I'm just gonna give you a bit of context of what's happening here. And I'm pretty sure that we all know the scripture. This is a story where God tells Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac um, at a place that he will show him. So it says, um, let me just get the scripture. Yeah, it says, when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on an altar on top of the wood. Now, I always read the scripture and I always hear it from a perspective of, I know that Abraham had to sacrifice Isaac, but the word part of it, I had always been skipping over until God really convicted me and said, read the scripture carefully. And when I read it, I realized that there was a word and this symbolized that not only would Abraham actually have to sacrifice Isaac, like in terms of like kill him, but he would actually have to burn him as well. And if you do research about the Old Testament, you realize that at the tabernacle, priests would actually burn the sacrifices that they would bring to the altar because it symbolized forgiveness. So they would kill the animal and blood would be shed, as you know, just like the blood had to be shed out for our Lord Jesus Christ for us to be forgiven. But they actually also had to burn this animal. And why they had to do this? Because the meat or the, the smell of the burning meat would actually be symbolic of the incense that actually would be going in the throne room of God, which symbolized forgiveness, which will also symbolize restoration. So, but in this instance, Abraham had to burn Isaac. And what the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit began telling me is this, that every sacrifice will burn. And I'm saying this because I wanna target a person today, whoever it is out there, who is struggling to give, who is struggling to tithe, who is struggling to offer because it is difficult. Listen, I always say this, it is very hard for you to give away seed when you need a harvest. 
It is very hard for you to give away what you need. So if you're struggling with this, be encouraged. Because if you read this scripture, you will know that at the end of it, God tells Abraham not to kill Isaac. And he says to him, now I know that there is nothing that you will hold for me. He says, now I know that you love me. So God was basically saying that, I wanted to see if everything that I've done for you so far, including me giving you Isaac, has taken my place in your heart. And church, I want to ask you guys, has everything that God given you today taken his place in your heart? Has the financial blessings, the increase, and everything that he's done for you taken God's place in your heart? See, this act of tithing and offering is a regular thing that we need to get to. It doesn't end. In fact, it's crazy because no matter how much money you make, God will always ask for the 10%. So it doesn't end because God is always wanting us to keep our hearts face to him. Our hearts always belonging to him. There's nothing that he wants to give us that will take his place in our hearts. So I bless, I hope that this blessed you and I hope that you are encouraged and I hope that if somebody out there is struggling, listen, I also struggled for many years to tithe, but I want to stand here as a testament and say, the moment I began to tithe and offer, I began to see God doing great things in the area of my finances. So the banking details are on screen right now. Please do give an offer whatever way that you feel comfortable with. And I'm just going to pray over your offering or your tithe, whatever it is that you're about to give. So we just close our eyes and pray for a few seconds. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we honor you, O Lord God. We bless your mighty name. But I we ask, O King of Kings, that as you're about to sow these seeds, that, Lord, you will look upon us with kindness and love, O oh, Father, that you will water these seeds, O oh, Father God, and these will be an act of obedience unto you to show you that there is nothing that you can give us, O oh, Lord God, that will ever take your place in our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen and amen. Well, guys, we have reached the end of this service. Very sad, I know, the most saddest part for me, but I'm also excited because when every, anything ends, it means you can always look forward to that thing starting again or the next thing that's gonna come. So we will see you next week, um, same time, same place. Please, 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 don't forget, we have prayer every Friday evening at seven o'clock on Google Meet. If you wanna join us, uh, the link will be sent on social media. Just keep following us. Uh, we will send you the link so you can join us for prayer. Very powerful. God does amazing things through their prayer. So God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next week. God bless you. I love you too. Peace.